and that is clicked. And I wanted to introduce uh, Maddie Shepard and Christy Mudd, and they work in the deeper learning uh, team. So they work in the same shop as I do in curriculum, de uh, curriculum design and learning innovation. I don't even know the, the, the right words there, um, but they work with me. And Christy used to work with me at Greenwood Elementary where Mary Beth, Mary Beth teaches now. So I've known Christy a long time. Uh, do you guys want to tell a little bit about yourself to our people? Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, I'm Maddie Shepard. Like Mimi said, on the deeper learning team, um, I like long walks on the, no, no I'm just kidding. Um, I uh, primarily work with elementary, although all of us kind of work on all of our district-wide projects. So we often find ourselves working um, with everyone all over the district. Um, we're super excited to talk to you guys about performance assessment today. Hey, and I'm Christy Mudd. Um, I'm also part of the deeper learning team and I just joined this past year. So it was a weird first year for me at a new job too. Um, but I work K through 12 AIS mostly, but then I, I kind of like Maddie said, we kind of just work all over wherever we're needed. And Maddie and Christy and I, like I said before, share the same space. Um, our boss really likes us to be present for our meetings by turning on our camera. So if you all would, if you would turn on your cameras, uh, that's just a, a sign of respect. I would greatly appreciate it. Not unless there's, if there's nudity, don't, you know, don't do that or anything, or if you're driving. But if you would, Forma, keep the camera on today. And Christy and Maddie, I will let you take it away. Thanks, guys. The cameras on really helps us know if our jokes land and if we should tell them again, um, or if we should not crack any jokes ever again. Um, just kidding. Uh, so thank you guys for turning on your cameras. We're excited to be here with you guys today. Um, I'm going to screen share. So Christy and I are, are your facilitators, but we want this to be as low key and conversational as we can make it. So if at any point you've got questions, um, you're welcome to turn on your mic and interrupt us. You're welcome to type something in the chat and um, we'll address it as soon as we see it. Um, but please feel free to interrupt and ask questions or offer thoughts or ideas as, as often as you please. Um, our subject today is performance assessments. And um, usually when we have this conversation, we talk a whole lot about what performance assessments are, um, just to, to give teachers kind of an introduction to what they look like. Our guess is that the nature of health and PE means that you're already doing a lot of performance assessments. You just might not be using that, um, that terminology. So we, were, we are gonna talk a little bit about what performance assessments are. Our guess is that you're gonna see a lot of similarities in the work that you're already doing just because health and PE is performative in nature. Um, and then we'll talk about how to elevate these performance assessments. So yes, we'll talk about what they are, but we'll talk uh, more in depth about how, elevate, or how to elevate what you're likely already doing. So our agenda today, we'll start with our why, our, the deeper learning team, we always start with the why. Um, why we're even talking about performance assessments or assessments that aren't um, standardized and inauthentic. We're trying to get away from those things as much as uh, we can. And we'll talk about some specific like com critical components, what makes a performance assessment. And then getting to that piece, where are you already doing this? Where are these components already pr um, present in your work and in the designs that you put forth for kids? And then we'll get to that how section. How are we gonna elevate these things? Um, we're gonna talk specifically about how to elevate opportunities for kids to have agency, how to elevate the purposeful learning and authenticity of what you're doing um, and how to bring in some pieces uh, for reflection. Again, that's where we planned to take the conversation, but um, if, if ideas from the group come up, um, we're always welcome to veer and, and meet what, where you guys are and what you wanna talk about. So, and then we'll finish up with a reflection and closing. So just a little bit about where we're headed. So uh, I'll turn it over to Christy. Okay, so like we said, we're gonna start with the why and the what. Um, so why performance assessments? Uh, I won't read these exactly to you, so you can read it on your own, but when I think about why performance assessments, because it's a way to take our content, 
our standards, our skills and competencies, and um, apply them in real world ways. Uh, also, when I think of a why, is because it really engages both teachers and students in the learning. Um, and lastly, it really does because it's real world, it's engaging, you know, it helps prepare our students for their future in college and career. Um, so not just, you know, um, things that can only be applied to the classroom, but outside of the classroom as well. This is really about the difference between um, the first driver's test you take, which is written, and the second driver's test you take where you're actually operating the vehicle. The standards, and this is especially true in health and PE, are meant to be performed. Um, they're all written in performative vernacular. And again, that is the truest in health and PE. So performance assessments are really ways for kids to demonstrate learning that are heavy on application and heavy on performance, actually doing something. Um, and again, like we know that you guys know this more deeply than a lot of other educators just by nature of what you teach. Okay, so what is a performance assessment? Um, and when I joined the deeper learning team, I think this was one of my top like things I decided that I really wanted to dig into because um, I think similar to kind of health and PE teachers, I was doing a lot of this. I just didn't necessarily have a terminology for it. And, um, and, and in that sense, I wasn't necessarily seeing how I could maybe elevate them in, in some ways. Um, so ultimately the purpose of a performance assessment is not necessarily to evaluate, but to improve student learning. Uh, students construct original answers, they produce a product and they perform an activity. Uh, performing an activity is probably uh, very familiar to you know, PE teachers because performing an activity is a performance assessment. Um, a big thing is, is not only does it measure their thinking and the reasoning, but it measures how they apply it. Uh, so like Maddie was saying with health and PE, there is a lot of application and, you know, um, it's not just that, you know, oh, someone's skipping or they're, you know, doing this sort of physical, act physical activity that I can say, oh, that's what that is. It's actually also being able to do it and perform it. Um, so it involves the demonstration and application of knowledge skills and competencies. And before we jump to the next slide, I will just touch on the right side. Um, this is our, our 4P template. And a lot of times when we're designing uh, performance assessments with teachers and staff, uh, we use the 4P template because it focuses in on the purpose, the products, and the process. And the process is kind of where everyone already um, is really comfortable, but you know, elevating can sometimes be adding that purpose and that product. But... <laughs> Christy, are you going to I'm be sorry. sharing the slide deck or sharing the 4P? Oh. Yes, I can go ahead and share the slide deck. And then also we're going to, we're going to talk a little bit more about the 4P in shortly too. Yes, go ahead and drop that in there. Um, we do have some, some work time scheduled for design and application. And we'll definitely want to make sure everyone's got access to the slide deck at that point. Um, because there are tons of resources and videos and templates and all kinds of things uh, that you can use at your own discretion. So I wanna make sure that's in there. Okay, if you go Perfect. to the next slide, it's in the same slide, but we did, we underlined, oh, sorry. So here we underlined perform an activity and demonstration. And we wanted to underline those because although this whole slide kind of talks about what a performance assessment is and the definition, these are words that we know are probably already extremely familiar to you as PE and health teachers, performing an activity and demonstrating. Um, so we wanted to show that, you know, kind of like Maddie said, PE and health already lend themselves very closely to performance assessments. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have some partners that are uh, kind of authorities on performance assessments and these are some of the critical components that uh, make a quality performance assessment. So before we go into that, I'll say, are we going to have 100% of these components 100% of the time? Probably not. Um, but the important thing is that we're aware of these components and we intentionally design for them when we can. Um, they're probably happening intentionally and by accident all over your classrooms and all over your learning designs. Um, but putting these out there and just being a little bit more aware and intentional uh, around these components will help us be better designers of assessment experiences. So big pieces, um, assessments are open and open-ended. That allows for kids to have choice and voice 
and how they demonstrate something and how they applicate or how they apply something in a way that makes sense for them. Um, it aligns to learning targets and 21st century skills. Um, while assessments are very much about standards and we all have standards no matter what we teach, they're also about competencies. Um, our JCPS backpack of success skills are our district competencies. Now, um, side conversation, competencies are more broad than standards. So for example, um, take effective communicator. There are tons of more explicit skills that are often uh, organized into standards that make someone an effective communicator, but it's a bigger, broader, more encompassing skill. Um, it's a, all of our performance assessments encompass those standards, but they're also about our uh, competencies. And again, in health and PE, all of our competencies live and breathe in very organic ways. So our performance assessments should be assessing standards. We should also be assessing and giving feedback on our backpack skills. How are kids becoming more productive collaborators? How are they communicating with each other? Those types of things. Um, and again, real application. So we know that filling out a multiple choice test, although obligatory sometimes, isn't the highest order type of application for a lot of skills and competencies. So I often ask myself if I'm designing something like this, where in the world would a, a person like actually have to use this skill or standard? And I try to construct an assessment opportunity that mirrors that scenario the best that I can with the resources that I have. Um, so just think about authentic ways for kids to apply what they're learning in your classes. Um, the last three quality performance assessment components, um, the criteria for success is really clear. Now, the, the piece about um, this piece that isn't written here in black and white, but is important is with the timing. We all develop rubrics. We all sit in, you know, PS, PLCs or have planning time and, and we know what we're looking for with an assessment. Uh, a, a good performance assessment shares that and makes it real transparent with kids. So as early on in the process as you possibly can, sharing that rubric for success. What does it look like in an observable sense to know that I have something or can do a skill? So sharing that criteria as early on in the process and in as kid-friendly of a manner as you can um, really helps the kids zero in and know exactly what's expected and then attack learning opportunities to shore themselves up for that final assessment. Um, in line with our, our district uh, goals, vision, and initiatives are that it's fair, culturally responsive, um, involves lots of perspectives and is accessible to everyone. And then results in originality. It's original to the student, there's multiple ways for kids to express and do, and there's some choice in that. Um, it's, it's not as rigid as some of the assessments we might see um, more traditionally or, or in some of our, our core classes. Do we have anything in the chat we need to pause on so far, friends? No, but I was thinking, Maddie, um, just really quick before we jump into the next part. So um, what might be, I know we've talked a lot about um, health and PE already lending itself very much to performance assessments. So like, what do you envision, like if we set a performance assessment in PE, you know, might look like, like, um, I guess to make it very clear cut. So for example, if, you know, you're all standards, I think we tried to look at them with Mimi and about like um, skipping, like uh, a skill that kids had to learn was skipping. Um, so the skipping itself, you know, is the performance, you know, but now we're going to kind of look at it through a quality lens and things like that. But I didn't know if you wanted to kind of share, like, um, just so we're really clear when we say performance assessments in PE, like that fact that they're already being done or yeah, Mimi, if you want to chime in, I just thought we might want to be, you know, clear there. Does anybody have anything that pops into their mind? The first thing that pops into my mind, I mentioned it in an earlier session was tinkling. Uh, if students are recording their own tinkling, um, routines. And I had Christy and Maddie were the ones that held the polls for the pictures that I sent out to you guys uh, ab about the fact that I had these tinkling polls that you guys could could use. But creating your own routine to tinkling was one of the things that popped into my mind. What are some things mm. that you guys think of? Let me pipe in real quick before I forget this. Um, 
I think one of the things that uh, could really help us elevate our work in this arena and health and PE is capturing this. I can't tell you how many times I have sat in defenses at schools and we're really trying to probe kids for, you know, how have you worked on becoming a productive collaborator? How have you grown in this skill or that skill? They talk about work in PE and classes all the time, um, but rarely have they captured it. So if, if helping kids, kids capture the learning experiences that they're taking part in to help develop those skills, like that would really shore them up in a way to really um, to help them connect what they're doing to why they're doing it. Because they're definitely doing it in your classes. We could do a better job at helping them capture it because it's, it's happening all over the place in health and PE classes. The other thing I'll say is uh, I think a lot about health. We've talked a lot about you know specific examples with PE. I know that uh, the health, I don't know if standard is the right word, but it are extremely skill-based. I think one of the big skill umbrellas is decision-making. So uh, creating a, a very specific rubric on things you would have to observe to know that a learner has mastered all of those sub-skills under decision-making, uh, making that clear cut up, up front and then giving them authentic opportunities in which to practice that decision making and most importantly giving them feedback on it um, is a an example of how this might manifest in a health class but now i'll shut up and defer to you guys um mimi asked where do you see this kind of taking shape in your classrooms or what are your thoughts so far you know, what are some things that you guys see as performance assessments that you do in your classrooms? Or Maddie, I might have jumped ahead because um, this might be also kind of read our breakouts around, but it's up to you. I didn't know if I jumped ahead. That's no. okay. We'll, we'll chat. Someone was starting to talk. All right, well, we do have um, this planned discussion later, so we'll just address it later. No big deal. Oh, look, there we are. Um, so we're gonna put everyone into uh, breakout rooms and give you a, a smaller group with which to discuss these questions. What connections can you see with the work you're already doing? Um, how are your assessments performative? How do you share the criteria up front? How do kids have choices? How is it authentic? Um, and then the only other job you have other than discussing these two questions is to choose a spokesperson so that when we come back about five to seven minutes after going into our breakout rooms, we'll share out, synthesize, and then we'll move on to the next piece. So Christy, do you wanna go over breakout instructions? Yes. So Mimi, do you want me to do breakouts or did you want to? I know we talked about it earlier. Um, well, I, I, how many, I was getting ready to do them. How many, oh, perfect. Did, how many do you want? I think we said about five at the most in each room. Okay. So let's say about six or seven rooms, maybe six, six rooms. Yes. And now what are their instructions again, just so they're all listening? All right. So instruction or direction number one, discuss these two questions. Uh, what principles or components of performance assessments are already present in your work? Um, how, are your, how are you doing any of the, the six components that we went over in previous slides? And the slide deck is in the chat in case you need to look over those. Um, and then the second job you have after you discuss that is to choose a spokesperson um, to share out with the rest of the group when we come back. Um, any questions about that before we're deployed into breakouts? Okay. All right, I hear none. Um, so again, five to seven, seven minutes, um, we'll, we'll send out a message before we bring everyone back. Happy discussing.
I'm going to hang out here for just a minute, make sure everyone gets deployed, and then I'll. Hi, Mr. Toll. Hi, Mr. Toll. All right, it looks right. like it looks everyone like has. Maddie, I think you're muted. Sorry about that. Um, I'm going to throw these questions back up uh, on the screen for us to discuss before we move on. So uh, we'll just go breakout room by breakout room. Um, the speaker from breakout room one, share what you guys talked about. I think it's us, right? That's yeah. us, Michael. Okay, um, so <clears throat> let's see. Um, we answered the two questions and um, there are connections. We can see connections on all the three words that we discussed. We got a virtual field day, a, uh, a workout with videos and different things that the kids share. And then the other one was a, Barb, you can help me. Uh, what was the name of yours? The storybook, something like that? Oh, no, we just did a create a game where um, the kids created different games and we kind of helped them to finalize it and then we made it into a book and then the classroom teachers could use that for recess. Awesome. Yeah, so uh, we went to all of the different six uh, performance assessments and they fit on all of them. So mm -hmm. I think on those three uh, different assessments they did, uh, they hit all the components and they were present. Yeah, I, this and the examples you guys talked about, we've got elements of choice, Kids are demonstrating in multiple ways. Um, we're capturing it. Awesome. Next group, what'd you guys talk about? Room two. Um, we talked about actually how it's how we do those assessments in class. Uh, we talked about, um, I, I was sharing with them that I'd use those with fourth and fifth grade and how we go over the expectations when they're doing it. We've been doing it for a couple like two or three years with fourth and fifth grade and how I want to um, go with uh, younger kids this year so by the time they get to fourth and fifth grade they have an understanding of how it works so they can kind of just say this is what we're working on you know how it's done go do it um, and if I want to do something original like the person before said we did um, games where I taught the games but that was a good idea I didn't I, we didn't do uh, give it to the classroom teachers I just kept the copy and I just have it in a binder every year and I can pull out and say well this student created this game and you know let's let's try this game but we just talked about how we have expectations for students when they go and they work together whether it's in a group or in a partnership and use a rubric to help them to accomplish the goal of learning the tasks they need to learn oh. I gave them the, t uh, the thing like dribbling the basketball, helping each other with that. So that's mm -hmm. what we talked about. Thanks for sharing, Karen. What school are you at? I am at Wheeler Elementary School and Klondike Elementary School. Thank you. Uh, yeah, the examples you guys, you're, you talked about were really heavy on this component, um, clear expectations and using those rubrics so that kids know uh, What's expected? Great, room three. I'm just kind of toggling back and forth between uh, these two slides because these are the components we talked about. Um, room three. Sorry, uh, sorry, I'm having, sorry, I'm having a little difficulty over here. Um, so we kind of talked about, can everybody hear me? Yep, loud and clear. Awesome. Um, so we kind of talked about the connections that, especially particularly, I noticed this year with um, backpack uh, 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 defenses with the fifth graders, I noticed, uh, I watched probably about 15 of them this year, and probably 10 of them had a, component, a health and P components, like where, where they use something that we did in class, which in the past, like in 2019, uh, 20 school year, I was like recording kids doing activities, whether it was a game or if we we're doing some type of, um, you know, skill. And I would record those and then I would load them up onto their backpack, uh, into their backpacks. And I noticed a lot of them were using those. So that was something we kind of talked about going forward, really making those connections with the assessments 
um, so that those kids can then use those resources, you know, in the future when they have to defend their backpacks. Thanks, Michael. Um, what school are you at? Simple Elementary. Simple, awesome. And was was someone else trying to speak? Sorry to interrupt. I thought I heard someone piping in. Maybe not. Um, well, thank you for sharing. And that's uh, one of the things we're going to talk about uh, in the future. Well, I mean, here today in our session, but in a few minutes is uh, capturing that stuff because um, kids are working on most, if not all of those backpack competencies in your classes and um, reflecting on those things and coming up with, with systematic ways to capture them like you have, Michael, um, is one of the things we're gonna talk about. So thank you for sharing. Yes, ma'am, uh, which I, I kind of like, I like, I like the idea of the backpack uh, connecting it to that because it kind of makes it more real world. Like, you know, that these skills are something that you're gonna use in the future. And the reason why we're doing it is because of this, you know, we want you to be competent in this skill or whatever. So I like how they, that we can connect those to the backpack skills. That's right. That's right. Thank you. Um, all right. Room four. So we talked about um, how sometimes it could, we had a few people from different uh, grade levels that they're teaching. We talked about how sometimes these performance assessments can sometimes stray away from the kids being active. Um, so we tried to come up with some ideas or some ways to keep the kids active. And one thing that I've been doing is um, our kids create circuits based upon the five fitness fundamentals. So the first thing that they learn is the difference between each fundamental exercises that would fall under each category of the fundamentals. And then they get divided into groups where their group specifically makes up three exercises that apply only to that fitness fundamental. And then they take the entire class through those at different periods of time throughout the year. Um, and then when it comes time for backpack information, they can show how they could create a circuit or a workout plan if you wanted to that is based solely on cardiovascular exercise or muscular strength exercise or so on and so forth so it allows them to differentiate it also allows them to get a leadership role and it also allows them to check all the boxes with a skill that they can do and there's some sort of performance assessment piece to it awesome thank you sam um where are you located i am at height elementary thank you um, well, in what you described, I think one of the biggest strengths is that kids are creating. They're drafting their own exercises to go with each one of those fundamentals. And we want that as often as possible. Kids spend a lot of time at school consuming information. And we want to try and create as many opportunities as we can for them to create and construct. Um, so thanks for sharing that example, Sam. That, um, a lot of strengths in that area. Uh, next group, I think we're on five. Um, I'll go ahead and speak. Um, our group was kind of off task when we were in our smaller group, uh, but I'll share one um, activity that I did with my students, and I'm at a middle school. Uh, every six weeks, they have a project they have to do, but probably my favorite is uh, it's around sportsmanship, and they have seven choices. They can uh, write a poem, a song, or a rap, uh, public service announcement, poster, brochure, so they have uh, seven choices. I can't remember I think I'm leaving some out, uh, but there's a rubric for each one. And um, uh, it takes a lot of planning, but the related arts teachers uh, work with me and the students have to um, present them to another class. So the teachers, you know, drama, um, uh, chorus, band, they give up about 10 minutes uh, for a couple weeks of their classes and the students go in and they present uh, whatever it is they're doing about sportsmanship and then those, the students in that class will, you know, uh, give them some feedback. But uh, I've had students that wrote, you know, um, announcements like public service announcements. And before ball games, it was during basketball, it was one I think of more. Um, the students before the game, uh, the students would talk to um, the players, the coaches, they get on the uh, PA system and talk about sportsmanship and what's expected at the game. And uh, when the students would go to put these in their backpacks, they would ask, well, you know, what category? And honestly, it could go in all of them. Uh, they had a choice to work by themselves or in groups up to uh, three. And uh, they had to, the biggest thing with this is to take the 
uh, character traits of sportsmanship and how they relate to real life, not just if you're playing sports, watching a game. Uh, and so my students really like that. And that's probably one of the most successful projects I have. And I know that uh, this year and last year, I was told that most of um, the defenses actually had that project in them. That's great. Thank you for sharing, Jamie. And I think you said you were at one of the Olmsteads, right? Yes, South. The, okay. the girl. Awesome. Thank you. Well, um, I think that's one of the, the biggest strengths of, of this discipline, health and PE, is that um, everything that we, we do translates into real life. Kids get better at working in groups, communicating, uh, dealing with constraints that aren't favorable to them, um, all all kinds of uh, some of, I, don't, I hate the term soft skills because these things really aren't soft. I think they're difficult, um, but these competencies kids build skills in, in a lot of ways in these classes. And that was a great example to show the real world applicability. All right, who's next? Group six. We didn't designate anybody, but because we were like finishing up, but I, I think Latoya had a lot to share. If Latoya doesn't mind sharing for our group, oh, Latoya is getting voluntold. I'm Sorry, not Latoya. Trying to. She actually <laughs> did a really amazing job, and she doesn't want to share. You know, I'm used to it. <laughs> <laughs> um, one of the things we really just did was we went over the bullets and really just ask one another whether or not it was something we saw within our classrooms um, or if it was something that we wanted to put inside of our classrooms or how we were relating that inside of our classrooms. We didn't really do a deeper dive into like each of them because by the time um, someone else was about to share, time was up and we had like 10 seconds and he got cut off. So we didn't get to the last one, but um, really just trying to have a better understanding of what this would look like inside of our classrooms and just helping each other to understand it a little bit better. I think that's really where we want to go with it um, because it's good on the surface, but really trying to dive deeper with it. I think this is a great starting point for us. Okay, thanks Latoya. And uh, yeah, the, the, it's a lot to go over in a short amount of time. So sorry to cut you guys off, um, but thank you for, for going in so deep into each one of the components. Group seven. I think this might be our last group. Yeah, I think we only had six. Mimi? Oh, okay. Yeah, I think we only had six. All right, well, LaToya, you were our, uh, our encore. Thank you. Um, all right, guys, good discussion. So um, like we predicted, a lot of these components are already taking place in the assessment experiences you're creating. So um, I just realized I'm stepping on Christy's toes and she was gonna introduce this section. So I am now shutting up. It's okay. You're doing such an amazing job and you can, you add so much to it without like, when I try to add, I go off on a tangent. And so most of the time I try to like stick to what everything I'm supposed to say. And I'm like, Maddie can literally go off and like, it still makes so much sense. So I was like, Nope, just keep going. Um, okay. So yes, kind of like what Maddie was saying, you, you all already have so many examples of performance assessments in your classrooms. Um, so how might we elevate these performance assessments? Okay, so one big way is with agency, uh, learner agency, and um, with that choice and voice or voice and choice. Uh, and there are a few different ways to do this. You can um, allow voice and choice in the path, the place, the pace, the time, and in their demonstrating of learning. Um, the big thing I wanna point out here is that uh, the goal of this is to make learners partners in their learning. Uh, it's empowering them to make choices based on what they're going to learn, when they're gonna learn it, how they're gonna learn it, um, and things like that. So when I was in the classroom, there were different voice and choice uh, parts that I felt like I could, I could start with and I was more comfortable with starting with. So when we say agency and adding voice and choice, we don't necessarily mean you have to add all of these components at once because that, that could be overwhelming but kind of starting at a spot and thinking, okay, uh, you know, my students are very aware of the skill that they have to uh, master or uh, complete by the end of the week. Um, so, but maybe they choose 
how they show it. I know um, we heard about the sportsmanship one where they had very different, you know, um, options on how they show it. And, and to even give more agency, maybe they get a say in how they show it. Maybe, you know, you have a menu of options, but then, you know, a student who might be very, you know, creative or advanced says, well, you know, can I show it in this way? Um, time. Uh, time is a big one for me as far as, especially since um, I'm a huge advocate of differentiating based on students' needs. And um, so if you have a very advanced learner and they can, you know, master that competency and show, uh, prove that they have that competency down on, the, on day two, um, even though you had five days planned for it, uh, maybe allowing them to have that agency and maybe having a plan going forward to challenge them more. Um, so these are just a few components and a few different ways that you can add some voice and choice and to allow more learner agency in your classroom. And I know, Maddie, you have you've a lot to add to this because this is a, a you know, a big thing with the deeper learning team. Um, I hope it's not a lot. I uh, like Christy said, agency is all about power. Uh, I'll, positioning kids to be agents of and advocates for their own learning. So choice. Um, in what they do and how they do it and how they show that they've got it um, and voice giving feedback to you on, on what that process was like for them as a learner are two really explicit ways to get to agency. Um, but agency in itself is, is a little bit broader so that basically kids just have power over what they're doing, how they're doing it. Um, and we're giving them feedback on those decisions so that they can improve. Goal setting and decision making are big pieces of the health and PE world. And so giving kids agency not only fits with the, the vibe of health and PE, but it fits with the skills and standards that you guys are charged with. So um, this aligns pr pretty closely with what you're already doing. Um, and just to, to simplify um, Christy's examples even more, path, how kids get to something, how they practice. So in the example that someone brought up earlier about um, kids uh, designing their like three workouts with, within each of the five fundamentals, that's a perfect example of kids having agency over the path. They're constructing what the practice uh, mechanisms are, and then they're choosing their pathway to practice. Um, we've seen a lot of variation in place and in time this year. Um, Learning happens in school, sure, but it happens everywhere. And so how can we empower kids to show us what they're learning outside of our gym or our classroom? Because um, that learning counts too. Uh, and then pacing, like Christy said, some kids are, are ready to move faster or slower with different skills or competencies. So how can we set up our classroom design in such a way where, uh, or not our classroom design, our instructional design in such a way where Kids that need more practice with something can have it. Kids that need more time with a teacher can have it. And kids that are okay to move on to the next piece um, in a guided, you know, structured way, how can they do that? So a little bit about one way to um, elevate our performance assessments is by offering opportunities for choice and voice so that kids can develop agency. That was a lot, sorry. <laughs> Um, the next piece is to elevate uh, the purposefulness of, of what we're doing and authenticity. So like you guys talked about um, in your discussion groups and alluded to when we were sharing, everything we do in health and PE translates to real life. Um, it might not be the sport or skill per se, but the collaboration um, that's involved in that, the resiliency and staying committed to something you might not have an affinity for in the beginning. Um, or being a team player, um, just how, how to be on a team. So how can we relate the, the overarching purpose of these things to kids? How can we help them uh, understand the why for what they're learning in health and PE? Um, I bet a lot of the stuff that you guys plan, the why is obvious and kids aren't asking, um, but some of the things we do, we do need to let them in on the why and show like, uh, we're not, yes, we're skipping to get some physical activity and skip, but we're also doing this so that you can practice learning a skill, practice being resilient, practice trying and failing and trying again. Um, in one of the groups that I popped into during the discussions, uh, you guys were talking about how PE at the high school level is required for graduation. 
reminding kids of that is important. Reminding them of why that's true is important as well. Um, although I don't always agree with the powers that be um, in our state that make decisions about education, um, this one makes a lot of sense. Why did decision makers decide that kids need to pass PE to, to graduate from high school and show that they're ready for the world? Well, yeah, it's about physical education, but it's also about developing healthy practices and healthy understandings of your social, emotional, mental, and physical health. Um, how can we bring kids into that larger, broader why? And then how can we connect? Um, oh, I kind of talked about that, what we're doing to authenticate the task. So just taking time. And I mean, it's for me, it's as explicit as writing it down in my lesson plan and literally setting a timer to talk about it, to make sure we do take time before we jump into the lesson or jump into teaching a skill that we do let kids in on why this is important. Why is it important right here in the now, but why is it important for you in the future as well? And um, I, I, I talked to Maddie about this a lot. Um, so I taught uh, fifth grade for a while. And um, I was saying that a ma the majority of my students loved gym and PE and, and things like that. But as I taught during older grades, I did notice that there were more kids who sometimes didn't like physical activity. They didn't like sports. And um, which is kind of odd, because like I said, most students are like, oh my gosh, I'm going to go to the gym, I'm going to get to run around. Uh, but as I taught older grades, I started seeing some reluctance. And so um, I, I talked to, uh, you know, I was talking about how those students really did need a why. They needed to know why they were doing it because they didn't really necessarily like physical, physical activity. So, so I think by helping them know the purpose um, could help them see that. Also, I don't know about you all, but I always had a why kid. Like even if they enjoyed the activity, there was always a kid that asked me why, like why should I do that? And so um, kind of having that, that purpose and, or even co-constructing the purpose, maybe you don't even tell them the why on that first day of class. Maybe you say, well, what, you know, you ask them, why might we be doing this, you all? Um, have them have some, you know, empowerment over that why. And, and then you can revisit that. And um, uh, I, I, Latoya, you don't have to speak on it, but something Latoya said in our small group was that sh she just mentioned that she had a purpose. She has a purpose for everything she does in her room. And, and she said, you know, she kind of even mentioned that um, that way students always knew why we were doing something. And she said, that, and, and there was value behind it. You know, so if something didn't have a purpose, it might not necessarily have that same value. So um, anyway, I just wanted to kind of add in, because I do know that, um, you know, with health and PE or especially PE, especially in elementary school level, there's a lot of kids who are excited to, to run around and things like that. But, um, you know, as kids get older and some kids are more aware of what they like, and what they don't like, uh, that purpose becomes extremely important. And making these discussions or like Christy said, even co-constructing them with the kids, uh, making this a habit is super important. It'll be a part of what you do. Um, and then finally, making time for reflection. Um, I would say uh, that this way to elevate performance assessments isn't specific to health and PE, but really to everyone. Um, I'll tell you that I'm guilty party number one of getting caught up in the instruction and being like, oh, we don't have time for reflection. Um, but really reflection is where we seal the deal, where we make sense of the learning, where we synthesize it, um, where we kind of tie and solidify the learning for the day. So as much as you can, if you need an accountability buddy, um, a kid in your classroom to help you remember to do reflection or set timers for yourself, I had to be super rigid about it. This time is really important um, in all classes. And the reason is because it solidifies the learning, but it also gives kids a chance to talk about uh, and make sense of what they were learning. So we talked several times about the fact that kids are working on all of the success skills in health and PE pretty much every day. Um, we don't always see that manifest in defenses though. And so I think we could help kids um, uncover and discuss what it is we're working on in health and PE that day and how we're helping them become, how did today's activity, how did today's skill, um, how did today's work with your team help you become a better collaborator? How did you work on becoming a better communicator today? 
Um, and those questions can be similar and consistent every day where we're, we're always talking about the success skills at the end of our class. Um, obviously discussion is a low you know, entry point because we don't need any materials. We can circle up, we can have small groups. That discussion can happen um, anywhere, anytime. Um, I'm not sure which of you guys talked about it, but um, you talked about capturing or videotaping what the kids are doing in your class. Um, we're really close to being at a one-to-one -one, um, situation. I'm not sure if it's the best decision for everyone in every school to have kids bring their laptops. But if you're doing something, you know, one week or a day where the kids are going to be constructing something, they are going to be performing something, or you want them to capture something they're doing together, have them bring their laptops to your classroom so that we can capture it, we can write about it, we can discuss it. Um, all of those things can, learning happens wherever. So um, I would say don't, don't be afraid to have kids bring some of those materials to you um, and put them aside while you're doing um, things that don't require laptops. Um, but that is gonna be their primary capturing mechanism, especially for um, curating artifacts. Um, so that, that might help there, but however you decide to do it, making time for reflection as often as you can so the kids can synthesize and make sense of what they did that day and how it helped them become um, one of these competencies uh, is only gonna mean more learner outcomes for all of us. And I was gonna say, that's something that I'm working a lot with, with like teachers right now is that uh, especially when you get to defenses, uh, it's like it, the students and the teachers are kind of scrambling. Um, and, and, and you know what, when you ask the students or you ask the teachers, they can refer to when they showed these skills, they can refer to, you know, and, and that's great, um, but it, it does elevate it a little bit when they have images or artifacts. Um, I love when students can explain their learning to me, no matter what, but when they have those images and those artifacts, it really does, you know, it, it gives a visual to them proving, you know, that they, they are mastering these competencies. Um, and so I've talked a lot about teachers, you know, yes, having, or maybe having one class iPad and you have a student who is the capture student who's supposed to like go around and take pictures for you um, or for them. And then, you know, just even having a shared folder where you, you dump all these photos and the students can pull from them for what they need. Uh, so I think Maddie hit on that a lot. I do think a lot of you all have mentioned, um, and, and I'm kind of guilty of, yes, having those reflections or having those discussions, but how do you have something concrete for those students to refer back to um, that also kind of solidifies, yes, the, the learning in their brains, because we know visuals can also um, help make those connections. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Christy. So we wanted to come back to this um, slide just to kind of summarize and revisit some of these primary components. So I'll, I'll turn it over to Christy um, to revisit some of these big rocks. All right, so yes, yeah, so what are the main, so we talked about quality performance assessments, but ultimately when we get to like, just what is a performance assessment? They are constructing, they are producing, they are performing. Uh, it's measuring their thinking and their skills and how they apply it. And it involves the demonstration and application of knowledge, skills, and competencies. Um, so we've gone, we've talked over and over about how health and PE already lends itself to these main components uh, and, and just, it's taking that and knowing that you're already doing many parts of that and how, how can we how can we elevate that and make it more purposeful, more authentic, more real world. So um, we're gonna give everyone some time and some support in doing that. So we'd like you to think about an assessment experience you're already doing that's already in the plan or something totally new and focus on um, one of those three areas. Uh, making space and planning for kids to have voice and choice and, and develop agency, making our assessments more authentic or uh, having a plan for sharing the purpose more explicitly, or three, making time for a reflective practice at the end of instructional time to really solidify and connect the learning. So again, we're going to launch into work time here in about um, I don't know, as soon as I finish the current sentence that is coming out, comma, um, but we're going to focus on those three areas. 
You might also choose to focus on any of the other components you feel like aren't as strong in your practice. Um, but but if, if you do feel like those are strong, then we'd like you to focus on agency, um, being more explicit with purpose or authenticating the assessment. Uh, and then thirdly, a plan for a reflective discussion to connect everything. And so Maddie, yeah, go ahead. I'm gonna show that next slide. So also if you, you know, if you're working on these things and you want to uh, peruse through some of these resources that we have. And then also I know we told Mimi that we would talk a little bit more about the four P's. So if you want to click on that. So if you click on this um, image, it will take you to our site. <clears throat> And then if you click on that, click here to download edible versions. And I'll just talk about this really quick if this is something you want to use while you're during your work time or while you're designing, because it lends itself to quality performance assessment, has spaces for all of those things. Camp Sorry, Maddie internet. has like yeah. 900 tabs open in addition to being on a slow internet server. So sorry, um, guys. So and there's a few different um, ones on this one, but all right, I'll wait. They're still loading, sorry. Yep, yep. <laughs> uh, these have actually some resources and examples too. All right, so the good stuff starts on slide five um, and continues. This is um, one template we just have several versions of with some small minor tweaks, just based on wor what works best for you and your brain. But you'll notice on them, especially if you go to back to six for me, mm -hmm. this is the one I use the most. So we kind of, we talked about how uh, the different pieces of a quality performance assessment can, you know, uh, increase engagement and authentic learning. So here we have the purpose, products, and process. So on the purpose, that's where it'd be your skills and your standards. So your PE and health standards. Maddie, could you make it big if you don't mind? No, I see some people I, on the screen. Oh, no. Okay. I, I mind so much. No, I'm kidding. Okay, here uh, we go. Much bigger. Um, so on the left, you would have your skills and your standards. So that would be not only your health and PE skills and standards, but also your backpack skills. Um, you might pose a, a, you know, authentic problem like um, tied to whatever skill that you might have. And then, um, you think of the end product. So I go back to kind of that sportsmanship um, activity we talked about and how there was a bunch of different products end products or different ways that they could perform it. Um, and that might, that would go there. How, how are they going to show their learning, um, you know, when they've mastered it and then success criteria is kind of your rubric, what it's going to look like. Right. And then the process is just in the center. That is kind of your day-to-day -day lesson plan. Like, Day one, what are they doing? Day two, what are you doing? Day three. Um, but we use this a lot because it really, you know, as teachers, we are already doing the process. The process is already there. That's our lesson plans. Um, but by really thinking about the purpose and the different products and how we can give voice and choice in, you know, both of those um, is how we move from just a performance assessment to a quality performance assessment that's more real world, that's more engaging, that puts a purpose behind what they are doing in class. Our, our colleague that um, did a lot of the drafting of this, when he uses this, he says, blue, then green, then everything in between. Um, and I find myself saying that every time I pull up this file. So blue first, that's our why. That's the things we have to teach and what it looks like when it's mastered. Then green, uh, what, how kids will demonstrate um, to align with that criteria and um, what kind of challenge, question, or problem can we um, root this in so that inquiry is, is a part of the process and um, it's, it's authentic and then everything in between, our, our process, our plan to get there. So uh, just, I'm going to reiterate the path one more time on how we got to this document. So. Um, I pressed escape like three times. So Mimi, did you we'll, want to say something okay, wait. before Maddie? Yeah, I'll let Maddie finish and then I wanted to say a couple of things. Okay. okay. So um, we've got this uh, resource slide. Some are videos, some are websites. Um, the quality or the uh, picture of the 4P over here is what we clicked on. That takes you to our website. 
And once you're at our website, you can click the download editable versions of these templates button, and then you'll make your own copy uh, and be able to work on them yourself. It'll be saved in your drive. The only other thing that I would explicitly call your attention to is the Colorado Department of Education Assessment Resource Bank. They do have um, some health and PE examples. And as you guys know better than most, oftentimes deeper learning examples in the related arts, including PE are fewer and further between, um, but this resource has those things. So I wanted to call your attention to that um, before we go into our work time. And then Mimi, did you have um, a few words as well? Yeah, I know some of you might be overwhelmed right now. So everybody take a deep breath. Um, I, I appreciate the fact that there are so many links in here. I wanted to, to share something with you myself to give you guys an idea. And it's something that the secondary PE people have been working on that I think will lend well as you get ready to go into your work time. And that is, I'm gonna share my screen for, well, actually, I'm gonna put the link in the chat first. Mimi, it might help also, um... When I envision this work time, you could also just think of an activity you already do in your classroom and just how like one, one tiny change or one small thing you could add to make it quality or to add more voice and choice. So literally it could be, oh, I already know I teach this, but you know, um, next time I do it, maybe I'll let the students choose, um, you know, what day they do it or, you know, something like that. So I do know it can be very overwhelming. So I do envision that this could simply be a taking an activity you already kind of have and even altering it just slightly, but I'll let you go. Sorry. Me. So I just shared a link that has a list of performance assessments that people, if you, if you are needing something that mm -hmm. you could use, and this is something that we're going to be doing throughout the year with health, but this is something the tab for PE is already here. Uh, the secondary folks went through and made some brainstorm, some performance assessments that you could do with each of the PE standards. And I don't know if I had shared that with you, Christy and Maddie, I may not have. So I apologize. Oh so my gosh. Like this is awesome. So we went ahead and tied it to the backpack folders as well. So let's say that you're Michael Stallings or Jamie Powell and you're thinking, hey, here's a food diary. Like that could give you an idea and then your, your work time, you could come up with an idea for a, um, for a, a food diary. Now, you've got all those links. I gave you this link. This is in our shared folder. Um, but like I say, we're going to be working in health. There's, there's nothing for health yet because we just started at the end of the year. But for PE, the other thing that you can do if you have something that you want to share on this. So if you've got a, another performance standard or a backpack project for standard one, demonstrate competence in the environment in a variety of motor skills, you can also add something yourself. So I ask you not to mess with the things that are already listed. But if you have an idea that you want to add to this, go ahead. And then these are just these are just um, check boxes that we've done. So now you've got something. If if you were not sure of what you wanted to work on during your planning time, now you have something to do. So you're welcome to take something that's already in your plan, construct something new, um, either one of those things, and you've got this awesome. A uh, menu of potential ideas that are already aligned to standards and backpack competencies to get you started. Um, full disclosure, uh, after our work time, uh, we're going to have some share out time before we finish up. Um, so just know that that is coming. Um, if you would like to be launched into a breakout room, um, if there's someone from another school that you plan with, or you guys have a um, a project or a learning experience you do um, together, or if there's just like a, a thought partner somewhere in this room that you'd like to bounce some ideas off of, we can throw anyone who wants to be thrown there into a breakout room. Um, Christy and I would be happy to give you feedback or answer questions throughout work time. Um, any questions on that before we start work time? I thought I would name a couple of rooms and have like an elementary room. Sure. A, um, a high school room and then have a health room in case people wanted to go there. 
You don't have to. I like that. Yeah. I said that, I said that that way I was thinking that earlier. I was like, that way no one has to ask to go to a breakout room, but they can go if they want. Yeah. So that's an option for you. If you want to go to a breakout room, um, if you have the most updated version of zoom, once the breakout rooms are launched, you'll have a breakout button in the bottom right corner of your zoom window and you'll be able to click on breakout room and go there. If you don't have the most updated version of Zoom, don't worry, um, I didn't either until very recently, um, then ask us to throw you in a room and then we can assign you to the room you want to go to. Um, you can make that request in chat um, or verbally, however you wanna do that. Um, but we hope this time um, can be used to, to plan something and so that we've, we've got a deliverable when we finish up today. So if you don't see the ability to go to a breakout room and you want to go to a breakout room, just put us in the chat. All right, we've got some requests coming in. So we'll work on assigning those folks that put those requests in and then um, make sure you're welcome to make those requests throughout the work time. Um, I'm setting, we had allotted 20 minutes for this. So we'll set our timer there um, and see where we are at the 20 minute mark. And then we'll come back and share before we finish up and reflect. And then again, Christy and I are, are here as well to answer any questions or hop into a breakout room or give feedback or any of those things. I'm struggling to figure out how to make a middle school room. So if you are middle school, you can just go to high school as well. If you're middle school PE, just go to high school. Courtney Henry, which group would you like to go to? High school, please. Thank you. I keep trying to help you assign Mimi and every time it moves the names when, when someone else leaves, I hope I'm not accidentally sending somebody somewhere else. I'm going through and assign it. Jamie, which, which group would you like to be with? I'll do high school. Thanks. Kyle, I just sent you an invite to go to high school. I figure that's where you'd want to go. Chris, where do you want to go? High school is good. Charles, you're elementary, correct? Yes, ma'am. Paul, your high school. Pat, your elementary, correct? High school. Oops, I assigned you to the wrong one. I'll get you back. Yeah. Okay. And I had already started the timer. Do you want me to reset it? No, I had I have a timer going on. How much time do you have left? I have I have 13 minutes left. Okay. I'm cool with you there. If you think 13 is enough, then that's fine. Fine with me. You might want to pause recording too. I should, should have told you that the other or I guess I could. Do you want me to pause it?
can we can we add like five minutes to the timer just um because some of our folks just got in um all right so i'm screen sharing again christy can you see the screen fabulous okay so we'd like to open i know we have um like a, a housekeeping kind of like attendance piece that Mimi is going to share here in a few minutes. But before we get there, um, what are some major takeaways or questions um, as we end our session? You can put it in the chat also, if you're not comfortable with un unmuting, um, you can drop it in the chat. Yeah, the chat actually might be better. And Christy, if you can just kind of moderate the chat um, as that as those are coming in. More student voice and reflection, um, how to elevate assessments, uh, make sure students knowing the why behind uh, what they're doing. Awesome. Well, those were the big learning targets, so that's good. <laughs> Um, enjoying hearing from other P and health teachers, like their ideas and how they elevate their assessments and like their why behind theirs. I will say that um, I, I actually enjoyed hearing a lot of the examples from classrooms too. Mm -hmm. Likewise. Uh, beginning with the end in mind. So thinking about the end. Um, you, uh, the four P's template. I really love. That. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Mimi. I, I I think that performance assessments will be one of our big focuses on our PLCs this year, um, and, and working together to create some of these. So we'll be definitely uh, reaching out to you guys as we move forward with all of this. What I was going to say, it's awesome that you got you all are already. Uh, it's you all already kind of have a plan to start um, capturing these because a, a big thing we talk about on the deeper learning team a lot is that there's so many amazing things going on across the district and how can we capture those and share those because as you all say it was it's really nice to hear from each other and sometimes you work in such silos especially if you're the only PE teacher health teacher in your building um, but being able to hear ideas from each other and share those ideas and you know Mimi with you already having a plan for like how to kind of capture that um, physically so that if they can't be in the same building or they can't be in the same space you know, having that shared space to, to share ideas. And if, uh, if performance or assessments are something you want to dive more deeply into, or um, it's your jam and you're, you know, you're already uh, there, we do have um, a performance assessment micro credential. Um, there's, uh, I don't know about a million, but probably thousands of micro credentials out there. Um, from uh, vendors like uh, Digital Promise, NEA has a lot of micro credentials on literally anything you can imagine. Um, but our our district offers uh, one time stipends for completion of those credentials, and um, the micro credential in itself is is just a task to show competency. Um, so there are some suggested resources and learning tasks. Um, but the micro credential in itself is just a task to show competency. And so um, if folks do go through that process and submit those learning tasks to show competency and they are approved by the vendor, either Digital Promise or NEA, um, we do offer those stipends because you've shown competency in something our district values in this example is performance assessments. Um, Mimi was involved in uh, our performance assessment micro credential pilot a few years ago and so is a great resource on all things micro credentials um, and I'm not sure what the the plan is to zoom in on performance assessments this upcoming year but those micro credentials offer a lot of um, really good resources and tasks um, to apply this to your everyday. So if we have a group of folks that would be interested in learning more about micro credentials uh, we could get a group of people and go through it together. Um, mm -hmm. That would be a great way to um, 
to, to really look on these and hone these in together as a group. So if you would be more interested in learning about micro credentials in performance assessments, why don't you email me and just let me know that you're interested and then we can follow up and we might follow up with Christy and Maddie because it's been a, a half a second since I've I've really delved into the micro credential world. But if you would be interested in, in getting some stipend and working as a group uh, on getting those micro credentials, then why don't you shoot me an email? I believe our resources page has some um, micro credential stuff on it from Justin too. Um, Cause I know that's a big thing he, he has worked on. So if like, you're like, I don't even know what, you know what that is. So there's um, a little bit of a, a link there. Cool. All right, well, um, thank you guys for your time and attention. Um, any other questions or any support you might need uh, along this line of performance assessments or learner agency, um, or if, if you wanna take Mimi up on the micro-credential offer, we can help as much or as little as, as you'd like. Um, we support the whole district in a lot of ways, so we'd be happy to help out. I'm maddie.shepherd, I'll put my email in the chat. Um, and Christy is Christy in person and Christina on email, and um, she'll put her email in the chat as well if you wanna follow up on anything. Um, and then I'll turn it over to Mimi because I know we have um, some housekeeping wrap up stuff before we finish this session, but thank you guys. So while we have a question and answer, if people have things for Christy and Maddie, I'm just launched the validation question in the chat uh, and Maddie and Christy, I will give you access so you can see the feedback from this, but everybody is going to be answering a question. If this is your first one of these today, all you have to do is click on the, the link that I just shared and um, and answer a question and that's how you'll get your PD. So it's just a simple reflective question. It will give Christy and Maddie some feedback on their session. It will also uh, allow me to know that you were there. Uh, if you are having trouble with getting this to pull up, please let me know. I am super excited that we had the two of you here today because I think you bookend each other really, really well. And I think it's uh, what you said that, that these guys and gals are using performance assessments more than what they think they are. Uh, and, and I think that it's just expanding on what they're already doing and thinking of the collection part. And I think that, that with a focus on this this year in our PLCs, and with a focus on this uh, in, in some additional trainings throughout the year uh, that, that we will be able to, to have a lot of, of common performance assessments that people can pull from. So that is my goal. If there is anybody that is having trouble with the Google form, if you would put that in the chat, I can email it to you. Looks like that it's working. Uh, Maddie and Christy, I will share that with you now so you can see what's going on. And Christy really does live a double life. She's Christina on email and nobody knows how to find her. Maybe I did that on purpose. Maybe you did. So I thought that I, when I worked at central office that I would get them to change Robin to Mimi. And so they changed it to Mimi.Ratliff, but I'm still Robin in the global. And so I'm still confusing to people. I'm gonna go ahead and click the stop recording button. <laughs>